praise God. We thank God for his goodness. We thank God for who he is. We thank you for joining us on this day, Sunday, August 2nd, 2020, which is the first Sunday of August. I thank God for life. I thank him for the brightness of the sun. Hallelujah. And the opportunities he provides to us in a new day. Again, I say thank God for life. I honor my pastor, Pastor Anthony Rogers, and our First Lady, First Lady Charlene Rogers. I also honor Deacon Joe Daniels, our Sunday School Superintendent, as well as his companion, Sister Annie Daniels. Our Sunday School teachers, I'd like to acknowledge Missionary Rachel Drake and Deacon Robert Delgado. As well as the entire viewing audience, I say welcome and again, good morning on this day. I always note, I thank God for the opportunity to review the Sunday School summary, our lesson summary with you today. It is a privilege. It is an honor each week to discuss the Word of God with the people of God for enlightenment in learning. Hallelujah. God is good. And I thank him for every opportunity that is provided. Our Bible basis, our Bible truth, and memory verse today are as follows. Our Bible basis, the entire content, our context of our discussion today is captured in the first book of James, verses 1 through 11. Our Bible truth, James instructs believers to endure trials with joy and pray for wisdom unwaveringly. Again, James instructs believers to endure trials with joy and pray for wisdom unwaveringly. Our memory verse is found in that fifth chapter of that first, excuse me, the first chapter <laughs> of the book of James in that fifth verse. If any of you lack wisdom, let him or she ask of God that giveth to all men and women liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. It shall be. Hallelujah. His word, we know in word meanings, just briefly shall, there's not a but, there's not a maybe, but the scripture says it shall be positively given. And it is just what the word says. It's easy. We just have to ask and believe it as we will see as the lesson highlights, as the lesson explains, as the lesson today outlines, hallelujah, we shall see that it is given to those who ask for it. Our lesson aim today, by the end of this lesson, we will consider the relationship between wisdom and perseverance through trials. We'll affirm the values of trials and hardships in making us more wise and productive disciples. And finally, we will pray for godly wisdom by which to endure life's trials and temptations. Today, our words that we are going to highlight are those that are uh, uh, in capital letters. Consider, affirm, pray. Consider, affirm, pray. Again, that is our goal, our lesson aim for the week. We capture these in week segments, but the goal is not only to apply it on a weekly basis, but to apply these aims to our life daily. Praise God. These are things that we should aim to, goals that we should aim for to make life easier, to make life more palatable, to make life more enjoyable, to make life more victorious. Hallelujah. That is the goal of reviewing the lesson. And then as with everything we do, 
we should have an aim. Consider is to think carefully about something normally before you make a decision. And to affirm is the state of fact, to assert strongly, publicly about that fact. And then to pray, pray from a dictionary perspective, which is what I'm going to use today, says to speak to God. Again, the Webster's are the dictionary meaning of pray is to speak to God. A question that I would like to ask you today is how many not only speak to God, but have a conversation with God. This is a discussion for another time. I know that question can go to many answers. As you ponder it, it is a question that you need to ask yourself. It is a question that you need to be truthful about when you answer it. When you ask yourself the question, please review and be truthful. Do you listen or do you take time to hear the response from God? When we speak to God, when we pray to God, are we taking the time to listen, to wait for his response, to listen to what his spirit is saying? Or do we move on after we've said what we say? Again, the dictionary response, our clarification of meaning, for praying is to speak to God. Hallelujah, but we shouldn't just be speaking to God. We should be having a conversation in which we're speaking. He's listening and he's speaking to us and we are listening to and waiting for his response. A few other words I would like to highlight today, perseverance. The meaning of perseverance is the persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. Again, perseverance is the persistence of doing something, stick to itness. You've heard that term before, but the ultimate goal is achieving success. So there are no distractions by any means necessary. I am going to pursue this through, hallelujah, because my ultimate goal is success. Perseverance, hallelujah, you press for success. Praise God. Perseverance is a state of mind as well. Hallelujah, but we will get into that as we continue with our lesson review. Another word is to analyze. Analytical examination of methodically identifying something in detail relating to our logical reasoning. Excuse me. Analyze is to examine methodically in detail. Again, analyze is to examine methodically in detail. The word analytical is relating to our logical reasoning or thinking. The reason I'm referring to the word analytical today is that is how I want us to look at this lesson today from a thought, mind, analyzing perspective. Hallelujah. I thank God for who he is. I thank him for the intelligence that he gives and provides to each of us individually so that we can read and interpret and understand. Hallelujah. In life, we're going to look at things today from this perspective today from an analytical, or we're going to analyze things today. Our lesson is found in the book of James. The book of James is in a, a general epistle or a general epistle. General 
by the word or the fact that it was not addressed to any specific individual or a local church. For this reason, it is noted as a general epistle. Hallelujah. There are epistles we see uh, uh, comparing James to many of the Pauline or the epistles that were written by the Apostle Paul. They identify who the book was written to or who, excuse me, the letter, the epistle, the letter was written to. Again, James, his letter was to the general church, general public, general uh, 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 believers. So there was no one specific, thus it being called a general epistle. Praise God. The epistles, letters were written with six elements. Praise God. They identify the writer. In many instances, they identify the recipients. In this, they did not specify the church, but James did specify who he was writing to, who his writing or reading audience was. The epistles normally have a greeting, a note of thanksgiving, the body of the letter, and then a closing. But there was a format in which epistles were written. Hallelujah. And that's why a lot of the New Testament writings follow this format. Just a little education. Everything has a process. Everything has a format. Everything that we do, hallelujah, everything that God does has a process to it. There's an order to it. <laughs> you cannot circumvent God's process. I don't care who you are. Many scholars believe that the author of the book of James is James, the son of Joseph and Mary. <laughs> James being then the stepbrother of Jesus. The epistle specifically in the writing thereof does not make any biological reference to the author, but the title itself being that it is named James is clear indication. In addition to that, the author, it's, it's very important to look at words. It's very important to understand what we're reading. This is why I, you see me painstakingly, sometimes may be redundant to you, but words are important, reviewing words every Sunday morning. The author makes a unique declaration. He says, James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He refers to both. He's a servant of God and of Jesus Christ. There's a distinction there and it's unique because you will not find that referenced anywhere else. There are servants, servants of God that is referenced, but he distinctly notes that he's a reference, our servant of God and of Jesus Christ. It is then asserted or believed that he was in writing by use of words, signifying who he was, identifying himself in his writing. Praise God. And then the reading audience that James was writing to were the persecuted Jewish Christians and our converts. His goal was to encourage them in the entire book to have pure religion. Praise God. The book of James is also identified as one of the wisdom books of the Bible, along with the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. This book, based upon the Kojic Sunday School annual commentary, was to the Jewish diaspora. These were tribes that were we know there were 12 tribes of Judah, 12 tribes of Israel, excuse me, 12 tribes of Israel. Um, these tribes and the descendants thereof, the occupants thereof, 
had been scattered. That scattering came because our, the dislocation from their homeland came during the Assyrian conquests and Babylonian captivity. Although they came out of this captivity, many of them found themselves to be where they were taken. They remained there. Many found themselves, some, still remaining in captivity. The bottom line is the letter James was writing was to everyone, regardless of where you were, regardless of your current condition, the word of encouragement in writing was coming to James to those new converts. Hallelujah. To those individuals that were his brothers and sisters by blood and faith. This applies to us today. Hallelujah. The book references this was a diverse array of people separated by empire and experience, but they were united by race and religion. I say that is applicable to many today, to each of us, to many of our plights that we are experiencing injustice. The people of God are a diverse array of people. We're just not talking about the Jewish people or the chosen people. We realize with the birth, the death and resurrection of Jesus, we are now part of that family. We are now part of, we have been adopted in. We are part of that royal family. We are part of that chosen people. We are part of, therefore, the scriptures that we're reading today, the scriptures from the book of Genesis through Revelation, apply to us based upon the redemptive work of Christ on the cross, giving his life and sacrificing that for everyone so that regardless of your race, regardless of your nationality, regardless of where you come from, who you are, who your ancestors are. This word applies to all of us. Praise him. James characterizes himself in today's lesson. Part one says rejoice in your trials. We're going to dissect this immediately in part one. Rejoice in your trials. I define this as part one uh, associated with James, the first four verses of that first chapter. Again, our part one is specific to the first four verses of that first chapter. James characterizes himself as a servant again of both God and Jesus. Hallelujah. In the time in which he was using the word servant, Servant is represented by a bond slave who had no right or wish of their own. Their only desire was to do their master's bidding. James, hallelujah, characterizes himself as a servant of both God and Jesus. Hallelujah, and the true meaning of the word is his only wish was to do his master's bidding. He goes on to say, my brethren, in his greeting, in his first statements, my brethren, making it personal. <laughs> it is known that James is or was the brother of Jesus, but he's also noting by calling them my brethren, I'm also your brother. Again, regardless of where you are, regardless of who you are, regardless of your situation, people of God, we can learn from this. As we are out ministering, as we are out witnessing, as we are out living our daily lives in quarantine, whatever we're doing and we're talking about Jesus, we have to remember that regardless of grace, regardless of nationality, 
regardless of who an individual is, he or she is your brother. Praise God. He or she is your brother. This is just not advice or encouragement James intends to offer, but he's extending it to people that he calls brother. He's extending it to people that he loves. He's extending it to people that he cares about. He's extending it to people with genuine compassion, genuine concern. Praise God. Let's make sure everything we do is genuine. Today, as I forestated with the word analyze and analytical, I'm going to ask you to calculate, to think. <laughs> Not only am I asking you this, but this is what James is asking you. Calculate, think, engage your mind from an analytical perspective. When you find yourself in a situation, sometimes we wonder, and again, I'm highlighting on the first four verses. Sometimes we ponder when we are confronted with trials or situations. Oh God, why me? <laughs> oh God, not now, not again. Or my God, am I a target for trials and tribulations? We often ponder this question as opposed to looking at it from an analytical perspective. Understanding why, huh? Why am I going through this? Why is there a need for me to go through this trial? Praise God. Why is it necessary? Mentally thinking, we may not know the specific reason why God is allowing us to, but we do know the benefits of, and let me restate that, we may not know the specifics of the situation of a trial in advance, but we know when a trial comes, it is for a reason. We have to think in certainty. We have to analyze the situation for clarity. We have to analyze the situation for an understanding. Praise God. We have to get an understanding standing. We have to think, we have to calculate, and we have to analyze. When you face different trials of many different kind, or a variety of trials, the scripture reference is diverse, but that's what diverse means. Trials of different kind, trials of variety. These types of trials, however, are intended to have a goal in mind. There is an end goal with you going through a trial. There is an end purpose for you going through a trial. That is those trials that come from God. Certainly there are many situations that we get ourselves into because we are not operating in the will of God. I'm not talking about those trials. I'm talking about trials, tribulations, and situations that come because the end result is profitable for us. There is a distinction in godly trials and trials that we have created because of our lack of disobedience. For those trials that come with an end result to make us better, we can count it joy, hallelujah, when you have the opportunity to go through Webster's or the dictionary or Microsoft's grammatical correction 
did not like me writing <laughs> count it joy because we have the opportunity to go through it wanted to correct it to say count it joy when you can go through hallelujah i say both are applicable count it all joy count it joy excuse me when you have the opportunity to go through but hallelujah it should be extremely joyous when you get through whatever it is that you're going through victorious so count it joy when you have the opportunity to go through and count it joy when you have victoriously gone through hallelujah count these things joy again remember to calculate to think to engage your mind to analyze hallelujah he goes on to say you know this you know why these things come think think about it this is the trying of your faith the trying of your faith will make it genuine the trying of your faith will identify any gaps. The trying of your faith will identify areas in which you are weak. The trying of your faith will help you identify where you need God's help. Hallelujah. God helps us, but we have to ask him for help as well. When we look at situations from an analytical perspective, we use our mind and not our emotion to help us go through. Again, we use our mind and not our emotions to help us go through. Hallelujah. It is the mind, hallelujah, that and the Holy Ghost working through the mind that brings things back to your remembrance, that brings the word back to your remembrance knowing that he's not going to put more on you than you can bear. It is the mind that says, say to the Lord, rebuke you. It is the mind that speaks and says the blood of Jesus. It is the mind that brings back that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and everything that is in it are all the inhabitants. It is the mind that says he's a strong tower. I can run into it and I am safe even in trial. Hallelujah. So it's important to analyze and to use the mind to go through as opposed to reacting out of emotion. Count it joy. Hallelujah. Count it joy when we can go through. Count it joy when we can go through count it joy when we can go through when you go through hallelujah it's not easy to go through i know <laughs> you know many of us have gone through but it's the way that you go through that is key it is the way that you go through that determines if you are a victorious it is the way that you go through to determine what is next praise god i how should i say some of us like going through because when we go through just like all of us are going through collaboratively or collectively let me correct that collectively through the corona uh, uh, uh the COVID 19 battle but it is impacting many of us differently in going through in quarantine in going through we find that it enhances it sharpens it uh, 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 has impacted our relationship with God it has impacted our communion with God and for most it has done so in a very positive way so hallelujah count it joy because in many times in many instances when you're going through it has increased your frequency in prayer it has increased your frequency in reading the word it has increased your frequency about witnessing of jesus and what he can do 
it has increased your faith to believe that God is a way maker. Hallelujah. And he is the way through. We just have to believe. All of these things are enhancements. All of these things are benefits of going through. Hallelujah. A trial, a situation. So because of all of the benefits, all the enhancements, glory to God, included in the benefit package of accepting Jesus and his way, you should count it joy because you know at the end of that trial, there are going to be some additional benefits added to you as a believer. Hallelujah. I thank God for who he is. I thank God because he's a, our individual savior. So the the benefits package that I have may be just a little different than you because I may have a lot more issues than you <laughs> in certain areas. So hallelujah, the benefit of my going through, glory to God, may be somewhat different than your benefit of going through. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, part one, rejoice in your trials. Count it joy. This is again highlighting on the first four voice, verses. Excuse me. Patience leads to three things. Perfection, wholeness, and wanting nothing. Again, our focus is on the first four verses right now. Patience leads to three things. Perfection, wholeness, and wanting nothing. The old people used to tell me, and I, I get corrected often, uh, Canada, there is no old people. You are the old people now. Very true. But when I was young, girl, I will correct it and clarify it. The older saints used to have a statement. If you can take it, <laughs> you can make it. Hallelujah. These days, we don't want to take anything. These days, we don't want to go through any trials. These days, we do not want any hardships whatsoever. We want to call everyone we know to see if the rules can be amended to help our situation. <laughs> we want to complain. We want to bitterly talk angrily sometimes, in anger, I should say, about going through. That is because we are not counting it joy. That is because we are using emotion. That is because we are not realizing the benefits of, hallelujah, the benefits of that trial, developing our patience, the benefits of those trials, helping us to become perfect, the benefit of those trials working out things in us that should not be in us so that we are whole, the benefit of going through tribulation so that we rely on God and his wisdom to carry us through. So the end result is we are wanting nothing, hallelujah, because we have the half confidence we are analyzing it and analytically thinking and knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that he cares for us and the end result will be to our benefit. The end result will be an enhancement in our benefit package as a believer. Praise God. Sometimes we even say God is not hearing us. He's not listening to us because he has not stepped in and resolved said trial or tribulation as quickly as you think he should. Praise God. This is why when I referred and asked the question earlier, how many are you speaking to God as opposed to having a, a conversation with God? when you're having a conversation with God, where you're praying to him and he's responding to you through the spirit, through his word, then you won't get angry. 
You won't say that he's not hearing me. You won't ask the questions, why me? Because you are in communion with God. That's why it's very important to not only speak to him, but have a conversation with him. A conversation is two parties speaking. Hallelujah. Not just one. How many of you, again, are having a conversation with God versus speaking to God? Let us check ourselves. Hallelujah. But we thank God for the ability to check ourselves, to identify unwelcome behavior, because he gives us the opportunity and the ability to correct that unwelcome behavior every day by confessing, God, I need help. I did not react in the best way for this situation. I did not seek your guidance in going through this trial. I need your help. Praise God. Finally, with those first four verses, the word entire is referenced, meaning every part of you has been tried and you are fully committed to the service of God. Entire, again, means every part of you has been tried and you are fully committed to the service of God. Hallelujah. Similar to an uh, animal or a sacrifice. I don't want to say animal, but similar to a sacrifice because we're not animals. <laughs> so I will say similar to a sacrifice. You are laying your life out. Hallelujah. Willingly for the service of the master, for him to use any way he so chooses. That is what the word entire references. Again, every part of you is tried and it is fully committed to the service of God. Are we there? Can you say that with truth? Does entire apply to you today? I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about today. Does this apply to you today, August 2nd? Part two says the way to wisdom is prayer. Again, we're in the first chapter of the book of James. Now going to verses five through eight. Again, the way to wisdom is prayer. Are you analyzing the situations? Realizing that you need help? From an analytical perspective, if we're going through trials, again, we're going through trials, we're thinking with our mind, we're not reacting in emotion. If we are analyzing the situation, then we should realize early on that we need help. And the help that we need is from God. Again, people of God, it's clear. We have situations, we have scenarios, we have trials, but let's look at them analytically. If you're going through something that you know absolutely nothing about, if you're going through something that is exhausting you thinking about it, then you need to go to God and ask him to help you because he is the source responsible for everything. Hallelujah. He is the source for everything. There are many ways where we can communicate with God. However, the most one of the most effective ways is praying for him, praying to him, excuse me. We have to ask God for wisdom when we're going through situations. The book of James instructs us to do so. We have to ask God for wisdom. Again, we're analyzing a situation. We're thinking with our mind. 
We're having a conversation with God because we have come up on something that we know nothing about. We have come on something where we need his help. And James is telling us it's as easy as just asking for it. In this passage of scripture, again, the first of the eight verses, James is not outlining any criteria for an individual to have a conversation with God and to ask God for that wisdom. They don't have to be related to anyone. <laughs> they don't know have to know a person. They don't have to be a thoroughbred. They don't have to be a 12th generation of. They don't have to have money to pay. It says any. The operative word in the scripture is any. Any of you lack wisdom. It's as simple as you asking from God and he will give it to you liberally or generously. You have to ask God, hallelujah, through your prayers, asking as you're walking and talking with him. Just ask him for wisdom. It is literally as easy as asking, and he's going to give it to you liberally, generously. He will reward you by you just asking. Hallelujah, because there is something that you're acknowledging by asking. You're acknowledging in him that he is God, that you are his servant, and you're asking his wisdom, his direction. And so this is key. This is why James outlined the fact that he was a servant of, he was willing, hallelujah. When you're a servant of, you're willing, you have sacrificed. Therefore, when the master, when God gives you instructions because you have sold out, because you're counting it joy, when you go through anything, you're counting it joy because you know your benefit package is going to be increased. Hallelujah. And that increases by the words that God gives you to go through the situation and the end result once you've gone through. Again, hallelujah. We count it joy because there is no limitations on the wisdom that God will give to us to help us go through situations. Hallelujah, there's a lot to be joyful for. My God, there's trials that we go through, looking at it as an opportunity to increase our benefits package in him, and then the ability to talk to him and to learn from him and to get direction from him. My God, when you look at it from that way, as opposed to emotionally from analyzing with the mind as opposed to emotion and acting out. It all makes perfect sense. Hallelujah. <laughs> some of you are saying, Canada, it's too easy. Well, some of us have a strong will <laughs> and a will not to live right and a will not to do right. This is why it is important to make sure that we pray. This is why it's important to read our word. This is why it's important to tune in to Unity Church of God and Christ every Wednesday, every Sunday, morning, 9.30 and 11 a.m. to hear and to learn about God, to hear and to learn when there are gaps in your life, but to also hear learn and receive instruction to fill those gaps and to enhance your life and to make it better. Praise God. So that when you're going through, you're counting it all joy. Praise God. Wisdom is as easy as asking for it. And when you receive it, it will be given to you generously, liberally. My God. Hallelujah. 
Wisdom is not just knowledge we learn today, but the ability to apply what you know and when to apply it. This is why the scripture tells us to acknowledge God in everything that we do. We have to ask him for wisdom, but we also need his direction. If we are being led, if we are listening to the spirit as it speaks to the church, then we are being led in a wise, instructive way by God. Hallelujah. When we do not seek God's wisdom, normally our response or our reaction in trying times is one of immaturity, is one nine out of 10 times that makes the scenario much, much worse. It extends the trial in some situations because we are trying to go through the trial on ourselves, by ourselves, excuse me, and use our own wisdom. Let me take that back. We choose to go through the trial alone. We try our own knowledge to get us through as opposed to consulting God who is the originator of, as opposed to consulting God who is the alpha and the omega of. He's the beginning and he's the end of your trial, but he's also responsible for every middle point of the trial. From the beginning to the end and the in between, he is God, he is responsible. So why you would not consult him I don't know why you would not ask his direction. I don't know. But because he's the one <laughs> that has created this trial for your growth, it is the best that you consult him because when you act on your own knowledge and apply no wisdom, then you make the scenario worse you make the trial worse and in many instances you extend the trial until you learn to ask god for help and seek his wisdom today are you extending your trials are you making scenarios and situations worse because you're trying to solve them as opposed to praying to god asking for his help and asking for his wisdom that he gives liberally, generously, regardless of how massive and how big the trial is or how it may be to you, hallelujah. If you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, he says you can say to a mountain, be moved and it will be moved. Praise God, saying all that to say. Seek God, seek his wisdom, seek his direction. And regardless of how massive, hallelujah, regardless of how overwhelming of the size of the trial, he gives you wisdom generously to know how to navigate through victoriously in trial. Hallelujah. God gives generously. God gives wisdom liberally. Praise God. All we have to do is asking. Even though you pray to God, if you waver about it, again, we're in the second part, the way to wisdom is prayer. Again, highlighting verses five through eight. If you pray to God, even though you pray, if you waver or if you doubt, you're demonstrating that you do not have faith or confidence in God to deliver. It's just like this. You have a couple of plans. Let me outline plan A. And if plan B, A does not work, I have plan B. Hallelujah. When you pray to God, there is no plan A and plan B. 
because when you pray to God, he is the plan. There is no alternate plan. Hallelujah. We have to realize when we pray to God, there is no alternate solution. When we pray to God, we're asking him, we're believing in him, we're believing on him, we're believing through him based upon everything that he has done from Genesis to Revelation, based upon what he has done for us individually, these things should give us a foundation of strong belief. These things should have built a foundation of trust. Hallelujah. When you ask something of God, don't waver. Don't doubt. Praise God. Many of us find ourselves wavering and doubting because we say something needs to be completed or it needs to happen in a certain amount of time. I have 24, I have 48, I have 72 hours in which this must be resolved. I've asked God, but I've got a time constraint. Hallelujah. But again, he is the alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. So if you have a time constraint, who cares? The Bible says, cast your care upon him. But we know we've got to communicate with him. James has given us a formula to analyze things with our mind, to think about it and not act out of emotion, to know with a surety and to believe and to stand on what we know and not waver. Hallelujah. When we waver, we show that we do not fully believe that God can do. And my God, please remember, if you show doubt, if you don't believe that he can do it, do you think he's going to act on your behalf when you have no trust in him? People of God, we get ourselves in scenarios. We fail miserably when going through trials because we have time constraints, time considerations. But again, I must highlight the fact that our time is God's time. Because our time is God's time, we do positively have the time to seek wisdom we do positively have the time to wait for his response. We do positively have the time to wait for his direction. Because as I live and breathe, you certainly will have the time to experience <laughs> yourself in a mess if you do not take the time to consult God. Again, time will be granted you to wallow in your mess, to wallow in <laughs> your own trial if you fail to seek his direction. Time will make itself present for you to experience <laughs> that unpleasurable moment when you realize I made a mess of things. I should have not only consulted God, but I should have waited on the Lord and his direction and his instruction because when he works, there is no confusion. When he works, there is a distinctive answer. Hallelujah. That is profitable for the believer. But it's when he works, praise God, in analyzing with the mind, and this may be redundant and I'm going through it a few times, but I want us to grasp, I want us to understand how things are easier said than done. However, through the power of his word, it's as easy as asking God. His word is powerful. And when we ask him, he responds. Let our words be productive. Let our words be productive. Let our words be productive by going to him in prayer, by repeating 
what his word says by repeating the instructions that he provides. Again, if we analyze with our mind, then we should know that God is faithful and he is a doer for them that believe. Hallelujah. Are you in need of help today? Do you believe God or are you wavering in situations? Double-mindedness. Normally, it equates to double-souled. Double-souled is, can equate to a dual personality. Saying all these things when you're double-minded, you're unstable, it leads to other things. It opens the door to other situations presenting themselves. Again, double-minded equal double-souled. Double-souled equal dual personality. A double-minded person would like to enjoy the blessings and favor of God as well as the sinful pleasures of this world. Are you double-minded? Are you wavering in your belief? Do you know what you want to do with your life? Hallelujah. God has given us today another day to make change, another day to identify the gaps, another day to make a decision to be unwavering, a decision to believe that God is the source of your direction. Hallelujah. James encourages the readers of the epistle today. Ask God and believe for wisdom. Do not waver, do not doubt, but just believe. There is no consistency in a wavering person. If the wind blows to the left or right, that person may blow along with it. <laughs> we know many people like that today. You may even be a wavering person yourself. Again, if you fall, you're, find yourself wavering between different beliefs, you need to get control of yourself. Be truthful with yourself and ask for God's help. There's no one around. In many instances, we are in our homes by ourselves. If we have others around, we can go into a room or a closet and ask God to help us. This is important. Your life, your future depends upon the decisions that you make today. Praise God. Because tomorrow is not promised. Also, finally, concerning wavering, please realize if you are unstable in your belief with God, I am 150% certain that you are unstable in other areas of your life as well. Man of God, woman of God, get yourself together. Get some stability. Ask God for his wisdom. Ask God for his direction. Going quickly to part three of today's lesson, the poor shall be raised, James 9 through 11. Again, the first chapter, verses 9 through 11. This is kind of a reversal of fortune, a fortune as per the book. Do not place your hope, trust, and assurance in material things, fame, nor fortune. Fortune. The kingdom of God is more valuable than all the riches in the world. People who trust in wealth find it very difficult to trust God. It is the normal process of nature for the sun to shine, the wind to blow, and plants and animals to sustain life through this process. The same thing is with man. It is a guaranteed that we will be born, that we will have one time to die. Man comes into world to live and to 
die or pass from this earthly body. It is in this same process, process of life and death. There are no questions about it. We know it is exact. Praise God. It will happen. We may not know when specifically it is going to happen, but we know it is an exact science that it will take place. Again, we may not know when, we may not know how, but we know it is exact and it will happen because it's been appointed unto man one time to die. Therefore, as factual as those events are in life, it is just as factual. I don't care how much money you have. We all are going to live and die. And just like flowers bloom, hallelujah, flowers show how beautiful they become just with seasons, just with time. That flower has an expectancy to live it has a duration after which it is going to die. It is going to become part of the soil so that some other element, molecule, life existence may form and live. As certain and as exact as that is, it is that man is going to live and die, regardless of how much money you have. It is certain that that will happen. It is certain and is exact that regardless of how much money you have, that money is not going to help you. Hallelujah, because we are going to live and die. It is appointed to one time and that money is not going to help you in eternity. Praise God. A reversal of fortune and as exact as life and death are, it is exact that God will, hallelujah, reward his people. There are many people now who are suffering, going through, who may not have the material wealth of others, hallelujah, but God is going to look upon you too. Praise God, and that's why I say exact things. Life and death are exact. Praise God. Plant life is exact. <laughs> and when we model our behavior, when we model things in life that develop to us based upon analyzing the facts, based upon using our minds, we see that God takes care of his own. Hallelujah. We are living to live again. We are here weekly, the Unity Church of God in Christ, because we want to provide valuable instruction and investment, hallelujah, far beyond any 401k savings plan or retirement plans. We are reviewing life skills. We are reviewing how you can invest your life Hallelujah. We are reviewing and providing instruction so that you can invest for eternity, not just for the present, but for eternity. Hallelujah. And I'll say it again, as certain as we live and breathe, it is exact that you will go through. It is exact that you live it is exact that you die. How we go through <laughs> the process from the beginning to the end is definitely up to us. The wise decision would be to seek God, his direction, hallelujah, his wisdom, his knowledge, so that when we go through situations, when we go through trials, we look at it with the mature mind, we look at it with the analytical mind, we look at it with a renewed mind, with a renewed thought, with a renewed process of seeking God, seeking his direction, seeking his knowledge, so that when wisdom is applied, 
that knowledge is applied that way through is applied at the appropriate time and the end result is a benefit. The end result is increase. The end result is sustainability for us as believers. The poor shall be raised. God, it is an exact statement that he is going to reward those. Many of those captives, many of those children of Israel were in bondage. And so the word was to them, regardless of where you are, regardless of your scenario. And again, that applies to us. Regardless of where you are today, his word meets you there. I dare you to ask God right now for help. I dare you to ask God right now for his direction. Our prayer today, Father, we pray that you will help us endure our trials. Help us to rejoice in the midst of trying seasons because we know that these trials help build our faith and strengthen our character. As we go through trials, help us to go to grow more and more into the image of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for wisdom in knowing how to do the right thing daily. We ask boldly, knowing full well that you answer the prayers of those with an unshakable faith. We pray this without wavering in the powerful name of Jesus, amen. Please remember to tune in at 11 a.m. today. We're excited to observe virtual Holy Convocation, excuse me, Holy Communion that will be extended by our pastor. Please tune in and hear the man of God who will provide you with clear, concise directions of how to live wisely and how to please God in this present world. Pastor Rogers will also provide instruction. I believe today there is a ride by. Wave and say hello to our pastor as we observe social distancing. Please remember to give. Your giving options are outlined are displayed below. May God continue to bless you and have an awesome Sunday. Thank